Hey everyone! Today we're going to be looking at three different types of motion graphs. Position, velocity, and acceleration, all against time. If we set up these three graphs, we'll find some interesting relationships between them. We know from our formula that velocity is change in position, or displacement, over time. Position is on our y-axis, so a change in this position is how far up or down that axis we move. And a change in time is the change on our x-axis. This sounds a lot like rise over run, or our slope. That makes the slope of a position versus time graph our velocity. We can use the same logic to see that the slope of a velocity versus time graph gives us our acceleration. Now let's discuss the difference between average and instantaneous velocity. We know that average velocity is displacement over time. Since displacement only cares about initial and final position, as we've talked about before, we can just draw a straight line between two points, and the slope of that line becomes our average velocity. See that here, from t1 to t2, and t2 to t3. Instantaneous velocity is a bit different. We want to know the velocity at a given instant. To do this, we draw a line that is tangent to the curve of the graph, like right here. This means that it only touched the graph once, at the instant that we want to know our velocity, which here would be at our t3. The slope of this line right here will be the instantaneous velocity at the x, or the time value of our graph. And as before, acceleration and velocity will have the same relationship as velocity does with position. So you can see here the tangent line for instantaneous acceleration and our average acceleration going from initial to final point here. Now we're going to look at some diagrams specifically for these four types of motion. Zero speed, constant speed, acceleration, and deceleration. For zero speed, it's quite self-explanatory. Think about it. When an object is at rest, both the velocity and the acceleration are at a constant zero. Thus, a position time graph will be a horizontal line with the y position value unchanging. The slope of a horizontal line is zero, so our velocity time graph stays at zero on the y-axis, and the slope of that graph, which represents our acceleration, is, you guessed it, also zero. For constant velocity, we have this animation to help out. The car is driving along the x-axis at a constant speed. For each second of motion, the car moves the same distance, so the position time graph has a straight but diagonal line. The slope of this line is our velocity, and we can see in this graph and in the animation respectively that neither the slope nor the velocity are changing. Thus, our velocity time graph has a horizontal line. Notice that it still has a non-zero y value. We take the slope of this, and we'll get zero, so once again, our acceleration is going to be a horizontal line at our t equals zero. Let's work backwards to look at constant acceleration. We can see here that our car is moving faster and faster, and our graphs show a constant acceleration with this horizontal line above zero, right here. To achieve this, the velocity time graph will have to have a constant non-zero slope which we do see here is true. It increases the same amount every second, so it is a straight diagonal line starting at the origin because this car started from rest. This then means the slope of a position time graph is changing. Since velocity is increasing the slope of our position time must also increase, we start with a low slope close to zero and it slowly becomes more and more steep. Now let's look at constant deceleration, or our vehicle slowing down to a halt. Deceleration means a negative acceleration. It is still a constant, so still a horizontal line, but it would be below the x-axis to indicate that it's negative. Since we didn't start from rest, our velocity graph will start higher up on the y-axis. Since the acceleration is negative, we have a constant negative slope, and the graph stops when it hits the x-axis, as that's when our velocity is zero. The position graph will once again be curved because there is a change in velocity, but this time we're starting with a large velocity, a large slope, and it slowly shallows out over time until it is a perfect horizontal, indicating that the car is at rest. Now, these graphs don't have to be just for cars or driving. They apply to any situation with the motion described. 
for example, the graphs for a constant acceleration car would, or our constantly accelerating car, would look exactly the same as this block would sliding down a ramp. This is constant acceleration, so as the block slide down, our graphs will look exactly the same. Thank you guys.